Good morning and welcome to our God's Word for today devotional. Let me read to you our text today as we continue our devotional in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 19 verses 11 to 17. And God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were carried away to the sick, and their diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Siva were doing this. But the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I recognize, but who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them, mastered all of them, and overpowered them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this became known to all the residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, and fear fell upon them all, and this and the name of the Lord Jesus was extolled. Like this um, uh, incident that happened during the time of Paul, Paul's stay in Ephesus, that there were many fraud, there were many people who used the name of God, especially Jesus, as we see here in this story. We have a lot of stories like this also today. That's why many people will not listen to the word of God because they had these experiences that people fool them or deceive them because they use the name of God in vain for their own selfish interest. But this fraud that they use the name of Jesus was exposed according to our story here. So let me just share to you some thoughts here regarding this story. God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul at Ephesus. And Ephesus was a city famous of the worship of Artemis or Diana and witchcraft. These miracles were directly identified as acts of power of the Holy Spirit who is working through Paul. So he was doing an extraordinary work. And the word extraordinary is coming from the Greek root word, tikano and as the idea of being accurate, effective, or hitting the target, means that it was really something that, that worked. And the phrase by the hands of Paul means that the miracles came through Paul, not necessarily only from his hands, but even those sick people who touched his skin were healed. So, this experience of Paul or these things that happened to Paul here was like the Lord Jesus Christ experience when people touch his robes and they were healed. We can see that story in Matthew chapter 9, verse 20 to 22, and even chapter 14, verse 34 to 36. They were healed when they touched Jesus' robes. However, this does not validate the modern practice of prayer handkerchiefs today. Have you heard of that practice of prayer handkerchiefs? There are televangelists today who sell pieces of cloth. They claim to have the power of healing, to earn money, or otherwise send God's blessings. So these people who are demanding money for a magical piece of fabric basically are for fraud, and they are just greedy for money. And we do believe that this is what the scriptures is teaching about the application of this story here in, in, in Paul's lives or Paul's life. Seeing what did what Paul did, some itinerant Jewish, Jewish exorcists undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits. It was so attractive to their eyes. After all, they want this power. So they invoked the name of Jesus, just as Paul did. And they were the seven sons of Sheba, a Jewish high priest. We don't know much about Sheba, but he's described here as a Jewish high priest. He might be a Jew who was practicing 
the magic or divination during his time, and he has seven sons. So they use the name of Jesus. Fraudsters or those people who are using the name of God often take advantage of the search for a deeper connection to the spirit world. There are really many people today who are fascinated with the spirit world. They are fascinated with the supernatural and the magical things. And these people will take advantage of this kind of people. The experience of Paul during their first missionary journey is that he had encountered one also in Cyprus. And his name was Bar Jesus. And remember, Peter also rebuked Simon, the sorcerer, because he wanted to buy the power of the Holy Spirit from them. So this people really are excited that he can have this power. So this exorcist use the sounds that they identify the Jesus Paul worship. So they were just using the name of Jesus. But they really don't believe in Jesus. They are really not prompted by the Holy Spirit to use the name of Jesus because they are not believers. They just want to use the power of Jesus. But by using the name of Jesus, they forgot and they didn't realize that his name in, must include his power, sovereignty, character, and authority, which they didn't have. Only Paul had these things in his life. When we are baptized in Jesus' name, we submit ourselves to him. So to use Jesus without really knowing him is to risk something. So there are people today who will use the name of Jesus for their selfish interests, but they didn't realize that they are in for something. Number one, rejection. Clearly in the gospel, particularly in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, Jesus warned us there when he, when he said there, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. It's really scary here because these guys use the name of God to cast out demons, to do miracles, but at the end, they will receive rejection because they are not true. They are fraud because they are workers of lawlessness, workers of iniquity. It's a scary thought. I hope that when we are going to use the name of Jesus, when we are going to invoke the name of Jesus, we are sure that we have a relationship with him. So let's be warned. This spirit of fraud and people who are greedy for money and using the name of Jesus are proliferating today. There are many today in the last days. Many will come in the name of Christ, isn't it? It's also a risk of being ignored, even worse, to be attacked by the demons being addressed. Here in this story, the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them, mastered all of them, and overpowered them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. As we see that in verse 16. The evil spirit transferred from those who are possessed by the evil spirit and and to them, they were not. They they, they were not able to uh, recognize this risk, so that their their lives became miserable. Imagine they were they were overpowered by the evil spirit, so that they came out from the house naked. They were really humiliated. Marx wrote in Mark chapter nine verse eighteen about the account of somebody who was possessed by the devil. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. Let's not forget that those who are invoked such power somehow will be governed by that power. 
and they will suffer the consequence. In other words, what happened to this seven sons of Sheba will, will give us a warning that God would expose the fraud. God would expose those who are not real to the fake and the false. And there is something ironical here because God himself used the demon to expose their folly and extol the integrity of Paul, that Paul was real. The spirit answered them, Jesus I know and Paul I recognize, but who are you? The people in response, because of this, they feared God. Thereby, the wicked ways was turned around as a means for God's glory. What these guys, was this fraud, this exorcists did, it was turned around by God in order that God was glorified. There is the same story in the Old Testament in the person of Balaam. Balaam was a fraud. But God used the animal, a donkey, to speak and expose Balaam's wickedness. In other words, God can turn things around for he is in control. Whatever the devil will plan, whatever the devil will devise, scheme, whatever it is, God can overturn it. God can turn it around for his glory. God and the Spirit's work could neither be misappropriated nor duplicated. When what the, what the devil will plan, what the devil will do, sometimes God allowed it. He allowed it for a reason, but let's trust that God is always in control. God will use what the devil will do for his glory. He will turn this around. Like here, Paul was attacked. Paul was, was um, maybe maligned. Paul was uh, because they thought that by doing this, they will be able to duplicate what Paul did. They were able to copy what Paul did. But nobody can misappropriate and duplicate the power of God through the Holy Spirit. God will always expose the false from the truth. That's why we can rest upon the power of God. So like Paul, let us just do what we need to do. Let's continue to preach the truth. Let's not manipulate. Let's not scheme our way. Let's not coerce people. Let's not manipulate people to believe. Just um, manipulating them. Because we know that God does not need our, our help. God does not need any man. He knows what he's doing, and we can trust on that. So I hope and I pray that this morning, whatever challenges that we are facing in life, we can trust that God is always in control. He will always expose the false. He will always expose the fraud. He will always uphold the truth. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for this morning that you have given us these principles in order for us to learn that we need to just to trust you and just like Paul, we can just do what we need to do to proclaim and, and declare the gospel. And Lord, when there are people who try to manipulate even use deception in order, Lord, to discredit your name. We know, Lord, that you're always in control. Help us to be watchful with these people. But there are really times, Lord, that we don't know how to handle them. But thank you that you're always in control. Thank you that you can rest upon the truth that you are powerful, God, and you can turn whatever the devil will do towards your glory. And this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you.